Morgan Freeman shuts down this interviewer for asking him about Black History Month. Okay. Which month is Jewish History Month? When asked the typical Black History Month question, Morgan Freeman wasn't here for it. Instead, he dropped one line that left the interviewer speechless, basically ending the entire debate. Watch how Freeman takes the conversation to a whole new level with a single statement. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do oh. you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? <laughs> No, well, no, 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 come on, tell me. Well, uh, I'm Jewish. Okay, which I'm month sure. is Jewish History Month? No, uh, there isn't one. Oh, oh, why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black History is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? Until... Stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace, you know me as Morgan Freeman. You understand what I, I know this white guy named Mike Wallace. Dana White gets questioned by an obnoxious reporter about why his fighters are on a leash. When a reporter tried to claim Dana White was controlling his fighters, Dana flipped it on him. By the end of his sharp response, it felt like the reporter was the one on a leash. Watch this verbal knockout from the UFC boss himself. Dana, I just want to go back. Um, you were talking about, like, you obviously give a long leash to your fighters about, you know, what they can say when they are up there with a UFC microphone and you are getting into territory of homophobia, transphobia. Like, is there... I don't give anybody a leash. Well, I'm saying you... A leash? I'm... St like Free speech. I control when, what people say. Kind of tell people what to believe. I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no leashes. What is your question? I was asking that question. I'll move on, though. Yeah, uh, probably a good idea. You sh that's ridiculous to say I give somebody a leash. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want, and they can believe whatever they want. We had, we had, we had two gay women who fought in the co-main event. They sat on the stage with Sean Strickland. They could give a shit what Sean Strickland thinks or what he says or what his beliefs are, or what his opinions are. You know what I mean? Mike Tyson gets called out by a news commenter who won't let go of his dark past. Tyson's had a rough history, but he's worked hard to evolve. Unfortunately, this news commenter didn't seem to care. Watch how Tyson reacts when his past is dragged up once again. It's a miracle the interviewer survived this one. Now, well, some of your critics would say, you know, there's a race for mayor. We know you're a convicted rapist. This could hurt his campaign. How would you respond to that? Hey, um, I don't know who said that. You don't even want to say that. And I don't have no comment to that. You know, because it's negative, and you're being negative. And I, 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 met, I met the mayor, right. and nothing they can do about it. We actually had a really good time. We, we, we talked about George Cervallo, who's a legend in your city, great man, with whom Mike spent quite a bit of time yesterday talking about his life, yeah. highs and lows. It's so interesting that you come across like a nice guy, but you're really a piece of shit. Hey, with that come comment. on, come on. No, nah, that was a piece of fuck you. That was a piece of shit. You know, we're, we're, doing, we're doing live TV. Hey, now. I don't care. What are you going to do about it? Right, thank, you for, thank you for coming in. Fuck you. Mike Tyson gets triggered by yet another dumb question from a reporter. Some reporters just don't learn. Tyson faces another round of pointless questions, and you can see the frustration building. Watch as Tyson tries to hold it together, barely, during this tense exchange. Mike, uh, Francois, both a six to one underdog. Are there any concerns on your part? I don't know anything about that. I don't know nothing about numbers. I just know what I can do. How about kill the... this mother? Okay. How about the 19 months off? Does, what does about that... it? it? What about it? Does it pose any problem to you? We'll see. I doubt it seriously. You take into the ring a lot of rage. Does that work for you or does it work against you at times? You know, who cares? We're in a fight anyway. What, what, the, what, what does it matter? Well, for example, rage against uh, Evander Holyfield worked against you. Well, f it. It's a fight. So whatever happens, happens. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. F off. Quentin Tarantino gets grilled by a feminist activist about Margot Robbie's lack of lines in his film. A feminist activist tried to criticize Tarantino for not giving Margot Robbie more lines. 
His response, pure Tarantino, sharp, unapologetic, and full of attitude. Watch how he shuts down the question without missing a beat. Quentin, you have put Margot Robbie up in your film. She was in the Leonardo with Leonardo in Wolf of Wall Street. This is a you know person with a great deal of acting talent, and yet you haven't really given her many lines in the movie. And I wondered, I guess that was a deliberate choice on your part, and I just wanted to know why that was, that we don't hear her actually speaking very much. And uh, Margot, I wanted you to also comment about being in the film in this part. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. This obnoxious reporter tries to ruin Quentin Tarantino's fun, but he flips the script. This reporter tried to poke at Tarantino, but instead she found herself in a verbal sparring match she wasn't ready for. Watch how Tarantino takes control of the interview, turning it into his own impompto performance. Now Quentin joins us. There he is, baby. How are you, Quentin? I am oh, here, Jen. Nice how you doing? New York. All right, all right. I haven't seen you since Pulp Fiction. <laughs> now, Here this, I am. Do I look just as handsome? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think they used that colored gel, though, that they used for Lucille Ball on Maine. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Well, you're lucky I can't see you right now. Oh, I look like I look bad. Okay. Why the need for so much gruesome graphic violence? Why not let us imagine Because it's a little so bit? much fun, Jan. Get really? it. Oh, really? Okay. I'd like to see you walk down the street and get attacked by some kids who've just seen you. Oh, movie. but you saw me. See, Jan, you're all messed okay. up because you're talking about real. Life. Samuel L. Jackson hilariously gives this white interviewer the N-word pass. When this interviewer got nervous about the word, Samuel L. Jackson made things even funnier by jokingly giving him an N-word pass. Watch the confusion and awkwardness that follows in this hilarious exchange. You know, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the usage of, uh, of the N-word in this movie. And, and no, nobody, none. The word would be... Oh, I don't want to say it. Why not? I don't like to say it. Have you ever said it? No, sir. Try it. I don't like to say it. Try it. Really? Seriously? We're not going to have this conversation unless you say it. You want to move on to another question? Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like, I don't want to say oh, it. come on. Ellen takes it way too far with Mariah Carey, trying to expose her pregnancy on live TV. Ellen put Mariah in a super awkward spot by pushing her to reveal her pregnancy on air. Watch as Ellen takes things way too far, forcing Mariah into an uncomfortable situation she clearly wasn't ready for. People are saying that uh, that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. Um, well, you don't have to. <laughs> no, answer. that's okay. No, no honestly, you don't have to answer. Me. Let's just toast with champagne and decide. But they've if, been uh, saying that since we. Some champagne. It's, it's just fattening. So, you can't you know. have champagne. That's not champagne because you can't. No, have it is. One. Is it really? Yeah. You want to. You want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. Taylor Swift's last ever interview with Ellen leaves her in tears, and here's why. Ellen didn't hold back when she grilled Taylor Swift about her exes and a particular song leaving Taylor visibly uncomfortable. This interview became so awkward it ended up being Swift's last appearance on the show. Watch the moment things go south. All right, let's talk about your number one hit where we are never, ever, 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 ever gonna get back together. Is that, who's that about? Here's what I'll do. You don't have to say. I'm gonna show pictures. Here's a bell and you ring it when, when. Oh my God. We'll show pictures. I don't know if I'm gonna do this. Yeah, you will. All right. <laughs> All right, let's we don't, didn't date. Oh. That's ridiculous to show Zach. They never did date. Okay. You know I can't talk about that. All right. <laughs> All right, John. What are, I, I don't know what I'm. You're supposed to ring. But what? I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. All right, I'll ring. Because they'll send me angry emails. Here. I don't want to get them. I'll hold it for you. Hmm? What are you doing to me? <laughs> Joy Bihar is anything but a joy in this interview with Gene Simmons and his wife. Gene Simmons wasn't ready for this. Joy Bihar asked him how many women he slept with right in front of his wife. Watch this cringe-worthy moment and see how Simmons handles it. You know, Gene Simmons was on the show. I've heard this before from him anyway. He claims that he had sex with 5,000 women. How's your back, Gene? <laughs> my, my back is good. My, sh my schmeckle, not so much. That's very nice of you to joke about. It's a joke. Where are you going? What are so you doing? Rude. She's so done rude. with you. It's so rude for you to joke about it. I was, I, I, was, really I was just okay. joking because Thank she's you. a comedian. Here, she's back on. It suits you. Thanks for the question. You, you did the entire setup. Please come back here. Good setup, Joyce. 
Don't blame me for this. Justin Bieber, at just 15 years old, completely roasts this interviewer who tried to tear him down. At 15, Bieber already had a quick wit. When this interviewer tried to throw shade, Bieber clapped back with a clever response that left her stunned. Watch this young pop star take control of the conversation. Critics will say that you are basically a product of marketing. Okay. That when it comes down to it, it's all the YouTube hype, it's all the attention you get online. Okay. Do you see yourself as a product of marketing hype? I think that everything happened organically. It wasn't something that the record label was pushing. It was basically happened because my fans liked me. And I think that coming from Stratford, Ontario, and just like, it basically gave others like hope because I come from basically somewhere that nothing really comes from there. Like nothing, nobody's ever came out of Stratford, Ontario and been famous or... Wait, Lloyd Robertson has come out of Stratford, Ontario and been famous. He anchors the national news on CTV. I'm just saying there hasn't been somebody to come out and be um, known worldwide. Okay. Do you agree in that point? Well, you know, it's hard to say because you I... think Lloyd Robinson is known in, in a little town in Germany? Probably not because he anchors the national news in Canada. Paris Hilton storms off after this interviewer compares her to the Kardashians and suggests her career is dying. This reporter made the mistake of suggesting Hilton's career was fading because of the Kardashians. Paris not having it. Watch how she handles the rude comments before storming off the set. Do you worry at times that the people who have followed in your footsteps, uh, like Kim Kardashian, are overshadowing you? No, not at all. There's been some talk about the ratings in the show being low. Um, has that upset you? No. Never a feeling of, do you ever worry about, do you ever worry about your moment having passed? <laughs> you want to wrap up? What followed was a long, heated conversation with Hilton and her publicist. Well, I don't want all this being used. And yet again, Joy Bahar is trying to ruin someone's day, but Matthew McConaughey wasn't having it. Joy Bihar tried to stir the pot, asking Matthew McConaughey if he thought he could get elected in Texas while being anti-gun. McConaughey, who usually keeps things all right, all right, all right, wasn't here for the bait. His response was so sharp, it left Joy speechless, something that doesn't happen often. Watch how he handles this controversial question with grace and just the right amount of sass. Do you think he would get elected in Texas being anti-gun? Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? One thing about if, if me and politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To don't, give you a direct do statement don't right there. This nosy interviewer crossed the line when asking Tom Cruise about Nicole Kidman. Tom Cruise thought he was in for a standard interview, but then the reporter hit him with a bombshell. Do you still love Nicole Kidman? You could see Cruz's confusion and disbelief on his face. He had to shut this one down quickly, and his response was the perfect combination of baffled and firm. Watch how Cruz handles this incredibly personal and awkward moment. Was Nicole the love of your life? What do you, what do you mean, Peter? You were married for 10 years. I, listen, we raised children. I, uh, you know, <laughs> how, do you answer that? how do you answer that question? She's someone that uh, I, uh, you know, I plan on getting married again. You do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And having kids? Absolutely. But Nicole was a major part of your life and a love of your life at the time. I loved Nick very much. There's no question. Would you like Nicole to remarry? Yes. I want Nicole to be happy. That's what I want. And do you have a relationship where you you talk it's a parenting relationship you know, and talk professionally about each other's why don't we why don't, listen here's the here's the thing peter yeah. you're stepping over a line now you're stepping over a line you know you are i suppose they're questions peter, though, that people want to know peter you want to know take and, responsibility for what you want to know don't say what other people this is a conversation that i'm having with you right you're now you're right okay so i'm just telling you right now okay just Put your manners back in. David Letterman asked Lindsay Lohan one of the rudest questions of all time. David Letterman has a reputation for being edgy, but this time he took it too far. In an interview with Lindsay Lohan, he asked a question so rude that it left Lohan fighting back tears. 
The room got tense, and it was clear this moment wasn't what anyone expected. See how this uncomfortable exchange unfolds on live TV. Now, uh, aren't, you supposed to, aren't you supposed to be in rehab now? Do you not watch anything that goes on? I do. Tabloid now? Now, now here's what May I... May 2nd. I was under the... May 2nd? Yes. And how long will you be in rehab? Uh, three months. How many times have you been in rehab? Several. And what, what, how will this time be different? What are they rehabbing, first of all? What, what is on their list? What are, what are they going to work on when you walk through the door? We didn't discuss in the, this in the pre-interview. No, but, but <laughs> it'll be three months and... and you're no, I think, I think, to be honest, I'm, I'm the happiest when I'm working and the healthiest. And I think this is an opportunity for me to, you know, focus on what I love in life. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a blessing. And... You drink too much? We've discussed this in the past. Oh, did we really? When did we discuss? Well, because See, we I'm had... the one who's having the blackouts. This is we have to work here for a movie. We have to what? Let's stay on the positive. Oh, what? Well, like trying... aside from that side of the positive. Yeah. All right. Come now, on now. No, okay. We'll talk about the movie. I've Scare... been here since I was seven. Seven years old. How many times do you think you've been here? I wouldn't know. I'll have to find out in rehab. An interviewer asks Jonah Hill if he's still considered the fat guy in Hollywood and you can see the disappointment on his face. Jonah Hill's career has been full of ups and downs, but this interview took a nosedive when a reporter had the nerve to ask if he was still the fat guy in Hollywood. Hill's expression says it all. Disappointment, frustration, and the kind of disbelief that comes when people still ask these kinds of questions. Watch his reaction as he shuts down this insult with class. But are you still considered the fat guy when you go to a party or anything? Are you the fat guy in Hollywood still? Or, or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know, this is great, now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? I have a question because you're in Atlanta and uh, you have this great story about a run-in with Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. So are you going to look him up while you're in town? You know he lives here. Oh, um, I don't know if I see him. I'll see him. He's great. Do you He's think, hilarious. Do you think he'll remember you? Uh, I don't know. He'd have to ask him. <laughs> okay. Jonah Hill gets caught off guard by a surprise question on Jimmy Kimmel after his return to acting. Jonah Hill was making his comeback after years away from the spotlight. Things were going smoothly until Jimmy Kimmel blindsided him with a question no one saw coming. Hill's reaction shows just how unprepared he was for this moment. Watch how Jonah tries to regain his composure after getting completely thrown off track. First of all, you smell good, which is surprising. Why is that surprising? I don't know. I just wouldn't think of a you, a guy who would have a nice scent on. And it's that's such a good. like. I'm gonna really work hard to not take that as a shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because I think you would smell nice. No, but I don't. I don't have. Let's anything dissect that. On. No, no, no. Let's go back. For okay, a let's second. go back. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hardy was not having any of the LGBTQ questions in this interview. Tom Hardy was in the middle of an interview when a question about his sexuality came completely completely out of left field. You could see the irritation building, and Hardy didn't waste any time shutting it down. Watch as he expertly handles this situation, letting the reporter know this was not the time or place for those kinds of questions. Yeah. And we're an LGBT news organization, and our question is for Tom Hardy. In the film, your character Ronnie is very open about his sexuality, but given interviews you've done in the past, um, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sexual to talk to media about their sexuality. What on earth are you on about? <laughs> I was referring to an interview given to Attitude magazine a few years ago. But what is your question? I was wondering if you find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. Okay. Anne Hathaway shuts down an interviewer after he keeps obsessing over her body in the Catwoman suit. Anne Hathaway came to talk about her role in The Dark Knight Rises, but this interviewer had other plans. He just couldn't stop asking about her body in that Catwoman suit. Hathaway, always quick on her feet, decided enough was enough and gave a response that completely destroyed his line of quest. Tolerate stupidity. Just watch how he handles this well-done steak complaint. Gordon Ramsay's tolerance for nonsense is zero, and this interaction proves it. A guy walks in with a photo of a well-done steak from one of Ramsay's restaurants, complaining about how it was cooked. Ramsay's reaction? Priceless. Watch as he absolutely roasts this guy, pun intended. Um, it's really weird for you to give me a piece of paper 
and when you say, am I satisfied that it's a good state, you have to be a little bit more honest with me on that one. What are you trying to get at? Well, we, we were there, um, and the guy that had that steak said that it was dry, not, it was flaky, it was terrible, essentially. But, um, mate, I mean, honestly, I mean, if you had a bad experience in my restaurant, I mean, why why didn't you say anything at the time? Well, we take your well, custom very, very seriously, but I mean... <laughs> considering, like, you guys are coming to Australia and yeah. bringing that steak, like... I know, but you've been a little bit stupid, come on. But it shouldn't be served up in the first place. What do you mean it shouldn't be served up in the first place? Well, I mean, would you would you be happy that your staff member actually let mate, that out I, onto the I, floor? How, how do they ask the, the steak to be cooked? Well done, it's clear. Yeah, but you ask the you ask for the steak to be cooked well done. And is that a well done steak? Oh come on! What is this? I mean, where where can can you? I mean, keep on rolling but for legal reasons. This is absolutely crucial. How sad is this that you ask for a steak to be cooked well done? Okay. Now, whatever quality of beef it is, it's gone past any form of taste when you've cooked it well done. So you present me with a picture, God bless you, and you say, is that right? I don't eat steak well done. That's your prerogative because you're the customer. But Unfortunately, you're never going to identify the quality of a beef when the steak is well cooked. So, I'm really sorry to piss on your bonfire, but it's a bit of a stupid question. Thank you. <laughs> Can I give you a paper back? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you very I thought much. it was an intelligent interview. What a disaster. <laughs>